to Lit Culture. I'm your host, Teacher Cray. On today's show, we will discuss with some young members of our local community, culture. Culture and its impact on their lives and its influence on their well-being. First, what does culture even mean? Culture is usually associated with your nationality or your country of birth. So for instance, we're here in America, so our culture is that of being an American. Yay! For me, although I'm an American, I was born in Antigua in the Caribbean. So whenever someone asks me about my culture, I love saying I'm Antiguan American or I'm Caribbean American. Yes. What else is culture? Culture are the customs and traditions with which we celebrate our heritage. Thanksgiving here in America. Traditional festivals like Juneteenth in the Caribbean Carnival. What else is culture, you say? It's the foods you eat, the traditional cuisines you make that you brought with you from your own backgrounds. Culture is also the magic that you create with music and its dances. Culture is also the language that you speak and even the dialect or the accents with which you speak. So for instance, being from the Caribbean and growing up in New York City, I'm told I have about three different types of accents. Like in my culture, we'd say, how ya do man? You're good, you're good. That's just saying, how are you doing? Are you good? So thank you for joining Lit Culture. Tune in for a great show. Hi, joining me in studio today, I have several special members of our young local community. Please help me in welcoming our guests. Please tell us your name. Hi, my name is Malik. Awesome. Hello, my name is Basilia. Hi, my name is Carl. Hi, my name is Marcia. And my name is John. Awesome. Welcome. Let's jump into our discussion. When you guys can acknowledge your culture, it means you are identifying and connecting to your cultural background. So, what are some special cultural moments, Malik, that you've shared with your family members? My cultural moment that I shared with my mom is that on Christmas, my mom helped me appreciate how to appreciate my gifts that I got, even though they're not what I wanted, but what I needed. Awesome, awesome. Anyone else care? Um, when I have family cookouts and me and my family have conversations and reminisce on old memories, it helps me connect and know that I have people that love me and care for me. Awesome. After large events like weddings, cookouts, and some other stuff, we usually do one dance at the end where everyone participates in it. When I was younger, I used to cook with my grandma and it made me feel more connected with her because she taught me recipes that she learned from her mother. When I went to Jamaica with my grandma, it was very special to see how she grew up and lived. Awesome. You've just heard some wonderful experiences that some of our young members have shared about their cultural family experiences and how it impacts their lives. Now guys, culture is who you are. It molds you and is reflected in your character, the way you carry yourself and in your behavior, how you treat each other. It motivates you to be your best self. As a teacher, once I'm able to connect to children's cultural backgrounds through my lessons, through bringing it out in discussions that we have, I am validating who they are. I am giving their culture a voice within my classroom. So, 
let's talk about some of your experiences at school. How does having cultural pride, Malik, that is the belief and the love that you have for your culture, how does having cultural pride affect how you carry yourself on a day-to-day -day basis, how you interact with others? It helps me interact with others because I can understand what they're saying more than when I'm not like talking to them. I can understand. Awesome. Awesome. Now let's hear from some of our others. Um, in school, being culturally different helps me because I can introduce people to new things that they've never heard or learned about before. In school, my culture helps me relate with other students and share some stuff that they might have gone with. Awesome. What I'm hearing is that our children are definitely impacted by having cultural pride. Once again, cultural pride is the value, the love you have inside of you that connects you to your cultural heritage. It helps us to be able to know where we came from and where we're going. Now, it's time for our share. Let's think. What are some takeaways that we have from our show today? Takeaways such as any lit ideas. Now, one thing I'd like to share with you is in the culture that I'm from, um, being born in Antigua in the Caribbean and then being raised here in America, I realize that I have some uh, cultural uh, differences that make me who I am. So for instance, when we say things like, this is lit, we kind of flick our flingers like lit. So, Malik, time for you to share. What is one takeaway you can uh, share with us that makes you think this is lit? Well, one thing I can say about this is lit is that the best thing ever thing that happened to me, I had a friend, he did a skateboard trick. It was an amazing trick, and I was like, this is lit, dude, and he was like, yeah, this is lit. Great idea. Awesome, awesome. So I'm hearing that you were able to share some of uh, uh, an experience with a friend who taught you something. Awesome. Anyone else care to share? I think it's lit being able to inform my friends about my background and my heritage. Awesome. I think it's lit that I can show people the music I listen to and things that I do. Awesome, awesome. So, thank you so much for sharing your wonderful ideas with us. Please note that acknowledging your culture sets you on a beautiful path of believing in your greatness. I urge you to commit to learning more and more about your cultural heritage. I urge you to commit to sharing your cultural heritage and who you are. So, in joining me today, once again, we have some young, beautiful members of our community who were able to share some cultural experiences that they've had with their family members. We heard about things that they've had or shared with friends, older friends that have taught them things. So I encourage you, please go out, go to a museum, go to um, a, a cultural arts center. Try to connect with who you are. One of the things that I've been able to do successfully as a, a researcher, having to research for the book that I wrote about um, carnival in my own hometown, I had to research what it meant to even have carnival. Because although we have carnival and we celebrate it on a yearly basis, and we get dressed up in costume, and we ravel through the streets, what does it really mean? And so, as a researcher, I came up with the fact that we celebrate carnival as a means of celebrating our cultural heritage in the Caribbean, being free from slavery. So carnival is similar to the Juneteenth festival we have here in Charlotte. And Juneteenth 
is a time where the very last slaves in Texas were free. Did you know that, Malik? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So June 19th, we commemorate uh, the emancipation of slavery, just like in the Caribbean, just like in South America, Central America, a very similar festival. Except in my country, in Antigua, Carnival, and even here in America, Carnival celebrates. It's a 10-day festival which celebrates being free. Awesome. So let's go over the ABCs of culture. Acknowledging your culture sets you on a beautiful path of believing in your greatness. B, believing in who you are based on the culture that you have sets you on a path to becoming wonderful. And C, committing, committing to your culture, committing to understanding who you are. I urge you to commit to learning more and more about your heritage and others and see the magic in your blessings. Did you know that acknowledging your culture will make you into a better reader? Here's how. Good readers improve their comprehension of stories by making connections to characters. Honeydew is a character in a children's book I wrote, and she understands how unique her culture truly is. She knows carnival is a magical time in Antigua. There's lots of soca and calypso music and people masquerading and dancing in the streets. Now, can you think of a time of a similar festival where there's music and people dancing in the streets? Hmm. Yes, you've just made a connection. That's the power of lit culture. For more helpful strategies, please visit my YouTube channel, Live with Teacher Cray. Hi, welcome back to Lit Culture. Joining me, yes, awesome. Joining me is a different set of young people from our local community. Please, let's hear from them. What is your name? Hi, my name is Destiny. Hi, my name is Ishe. Hello, my name is Isaiah. Hi, my name is Keisha. Hi, my name is Malik. Awesome. You've just been introduced to some of the younger members of the local Charlotte community. Now, in the first segment, we discussed with some of the older students here what it meant to have cultural pride. In this segment, we will discuss the different elements of culture. So, let's review. Culture is closely associated with your nationality. So, Miss Destiny, your nationality being born here in America makes you American. That is very important with how we identify ourselves, our nationality. Another element of culture is the music that we listen to. So in my culture, coming from the Caribbean, we listen to soca and calypso. Makes you want to move your body. Destiny, tell us, what is some music that you like to listen to? Uh, gospel music. Gospel is one of my favorite. Tell me more. Uh... Pop music. Pop music. Like, who's your favorite pop artist? Singer. Uh, Travis Green. Travis Green. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. I love him. Okay. So, culture is both the music and its dances. So, Destiny, in the Caribbean, we have soca and calypso and even reggae music. And we do a dance called whining, where we kind of whine our bodies down. So, what types of dances do you do with gospel? You might do praise dancing. Yes. Praise dancing, right? 
What about to pop music such as hip hop and R and B? Any of our other guests care to share? Well, one of the hip hop R and B I've seen is The Weeknd. Okay, awesome. Um, another R and B artist that I like. Her name is SZA. Okay. I like. I like Beyonce. Beyonce, awesome. I like either Ariana Grande or Zendaya. Yes, awesome. So we've just heard from our guests about different artists, different singers. What types of dances do we like to put to some of those pop and R and B singers? Who can start? Break dancing. Break dancing, awesome. Hit the quang. Hit the quang. Jazz dancing. Jazz. Well, sometimes I do African dance. Oh my goodness, yes. I remember when I first came to this country, I actually was a dancer in Antigua. I went to summer dance camp. And so when I came here, about eight years of age in the Bronx, New York, I guess it just came out naturally. So I remember one of my first instructors was not my teacher at school, but she chose me. And I remember I came up with an African cultural dance with uh, another student. And I mean, everyone in my school loved the dance. We performed it like three or four times. We even performed at Destiny at the fourth grade graduation. I felt like I was a star. And I felt that way because I was connecting to my cultural heritage. Just like when you do these current dances, the whip nene, it, the quan, is that what it is? Yes, believe it or not, those dances are traditionally connected to the Yoruba, Ashanti, the Twi people of Africa. So. Another element of culture is the traditional foods we eat. So for instance, in my culture, in Antia, we have traditional dishes like a sweet coconut dumpling called dukana. It's made with sweet potato, flour, sugar, uh, spices like nutmeg and cinnamon and you roll it up into a dough, and you put it in these banana leaves, and you boil it in water. That's a traditional food. What traditional foods do we have here in America? Can you tell me what you like to eat, Destiny? Yeah, spaghetti. Spaghetti and meatballs. Anyone else? Well, sometimes I eat um, broccoli and cheese alfredo. Definitely. Salmon. Salmon. Yes. Eggs. Eggs. Orange sweet and sour chicken. Oh, wow. That is some southern cooking right there. Believe it or not, those foods you eat are directly connected to your culture. And you know how I know? Some of what you said, I've never even eaten because I wasn't brought up cooking that type of food. Just like Destiny, you weren't brought up in your family cooking my traditional food, dukana, with something called salt fish on the side, stewed down. That's my cultural dish. Now, does it mean that my food is tastier? Does it mean that my cultural dishes are more important than your spaghetti and meatballs? No, it does not mean that. It just means that we are all special. Our foods, our cultural dishes, they're what makes us special and unique. Lit Culture was brought to you by the special and wonderful support of some of our local businesses. Thank you to Golden Crust, located in the McCullough Common section of the University City section in Charlotte. Now, another element of culture is, hmm, we looked at music and dances, we looked at the nationality, we looked at our foods. Now, how about the festivals, the customs, the traditions that we love to have every year? 
in the first segment, we talked a little bit, Destiny, about one of our traditional festivals here called Juneteenth, where we celebrate the emancipation of slavery. And I mentioned to you, there's a similar festival in Antigua and in the Caribbean called Carnival. Yes. So what are some traditional customs or festivals that we celebrate? Maybe it could be something as simple as Christmas. Can you think of anything, Destiny? Uh, summer. Summer vacation, yes. We, here in Charlotte, do you know how many festivals I've been to already? There's the Jazz Festival, the Soul Fest Festival. Now they're about to have, guess what? Caribbean festival called the Jack Fest Festival. Have you heard about it? It's coming up. Anything else that we'd like to celebrate with our culture? Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa, awesome. Now Kwanzaa is directly connected to our to our cultural heritage. Kwanzaa actually is a celebration that goes along or right after Christmas, where the African American family gets to unite. So each day out of the six days, each day has a color. Each day you light a candle. Each day you say, God, giving thanks to you, giving thanks for our family, our cultural heritage, for making us who I am, and giving us the pathway to going forward. Anything else? Easter. Easter, yes. Thanksgiving. 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 Sometimes, sometimes I celebrate Ramadan. Awesome, I love to hear that. Now Ramadan, as some of you may know, goes along with the Muslim faith. Just like Christmas goes along with the Christian faith. Each one, depending on their faith, have different festivals and customs where they get to celebrate their higher purpose in life. Awesome. Thanking you guys so much for being here and for being great and awesome guests. Now let's recap some of the things we just learned today, Destiny. Culture is, first and foremost, connected to your cultural heritage, which usually is connected to your nationality. We are American, yes, I am an American citizen. Praise God, thanking you so much for that opportunity to come into someone else's land and be able to live here. But also remembering my past and my culture, being Antiguan. So whenever anyone asks, I am Antiguan American. I am Caribbean American. Nationality is very important. Also, understanding the customs that you share with your family, that's what makes you unique. That's what makes us special. Not everyone might be in the same cultural uh, family as you, but guess what? Each one is still unique. And it is those differences, that diversity, that adds richness to our culture and our cultural heritage here in America. That's what it was founded on. Being able to be from different backgrounds and still unite and come together. And so, I thank you all. I thank you for tuning in. I thank you guys for my studio audience, for my guests, for all that you've had to say and contribute to our wonderful program. Lit Culture. Thanking you once again. Please do check in for me. Please do check YouTube Live with Teacher Cray for more strategies, reading strategies that I put there for free. Help your children, help your family become better readers, become better writers. Please also follow me on Instagram at Teacher Cray, Facebook at Teacher Cray, and on Twitter at Teacher Cray. I thank you for being a wonderful studio audience. Give yourself a round of applause. Awesome, awesome. And you can also follow my website, Cray Mahalia Francis. Again, www.craymahaliafrancis.com. Thank you so much for joining me. Come on, dance. Do that with me now.
Baby girl, my pussy down and reminisce. Cut road that take me to your heart was fancy stuff. Many joy, happiness, and many wish. But now you're in my arms with many hugs and many kisses. Now, right now, just wanna get it up to date. Cut your happiness is strictly up to me. And it goes how we get it strictly up to me. So looking at my face, where you say, where you say. So if we celebrate carnival every single year, yes, we get on the brand new clothes and we're, you know, stepping out, but we as parents and adults and educators need to remind our children why we're celebrating carnival. We need to be able to have those conversations. And it, can't, it just can't be a sit down. You can interject uh, your history.